Before we give, begin this chapter or this lesson in earnest, we need to talk about a few things. Number one, they're kind of in the center of your page, but does anyone know what these are called, these symbols right here? What are they called? Greater than, less than, equal than. Yeah, okay, so we're on the right track. Um, because we're going to be using them today, we're going to be solving inequalities. We have to know what these are called. Does anyone know what this particular one is called? Less than. Here's how you remember it. It is less than. Le it's less than. Everybody right now, take your hand, your left hand, and do this. I'm facing the, the wall so I can be you. Your phone should be put away, please. Everybody do this with their left hand. Make sure it's your left hand. And then tilt it to the side. Doesn't it look like that first symbol right there? That's a less than because it's your left hand. If you put the little line underneath it, that's like half of an equal sign. So it's less than or equal to. Now everybody switch hands. Give me your right hand. Okay, your right hand kind of makes the shape of this symbol. And since your right hand is greater than, see that R and greater, that is the greater than symbol. So we have less than. What would it be less than? We have. Less than or equal to if it's just a number. Wouldn't it have to be exact like greater than, equal to, or less than? So greater than or less than means above or below that number, not including the number. But less than or equal to means it can also be that number. So if I say less than or equal to 2, I'm talking about 2, 3, or sorry, less than. 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, and 2. Greater than or equal to 2 is 2, 3, 4, 5, on and on and on. So we're going to write down that the first symbol that we drew on there is less than. The second one, I'm drawing it up in red. Y'all write this down. Is less than or equal to. If you flip this symbol to look like your right hand, that's called greater than. And then the, with the line underneath it is greater than or equal to. Now, our objective of today is not just to know about these symbols. That's important and prerequisite knowledge for today. Our goal of today is to be able to solve linear inequalities in one variable, including those for which the application of the distributive property is necessary and for which variables are included on both sides. That sounds exactly like our objective when we solved equations. The only difference is that we're not solving equations with distribution and variables on both sides. We're solving inequalities. There will be no more equal signs today. We are dealing with these four inequality symbols. So let's write down some definitions. An inequality, I-N-E-Q-U-I. That's not right. I can't spell out loud. <laughs> Q-U-A-L-I-T-Y. Inequality is a mathematical statement that compares expressions and contains either less than, less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to. So an example of this might be 2x plus 5 greater than or equal to 15. Now, since when we had equations, we had solutions. That's what we called the answer to one of those problems. It was a solution, not just answer. We have to change this vocabulary when we talk about inequalities. It's no longer just called a solution. It's called a solution set. Because it's a set of numbers, a set of values that makes the inequality true. Not just one number, but a range of numbers, an interval of numbers. So an example of what a solution set might look like is something like this. X greater than or equal to 5. That would be a solution set. Because we're saying any number, including 5, that's bigger than 5, would be a part of my solution set, would make my comparison, my inequality, true. So what's going to happen today is I'm going to keep us at the same pace pretty much all day doing some practice problems. We're going to do the first one on the first side of this page uh, slowly and together. We're going to do it with the symbols first, and then we're going to write down what we did. You have on these notes both a process that says what to do as well as an example that we're going to do together to show you the description of the process. Hopefully you already noticed that that box method is still there. We are still doing the exact same box method with one extra thing that happens. And I'll show you what that one thing is here in a second. So together... Let's do this first problem. It's already there for you. We're just going to annotate, which means we're going to add stuff. The very first thing that we do is we look for parentheses. Oh, we also draw a line. So everybody, instead of through the equal sign, 
you're going to put your line through the inequality. That's super important. Okay. We have numbers in front of parentheses. What do we do with that number in front of a parentheses? Multiply. Multiply. So 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 times negative t is negative 4t. We wrote the next line down. That's important. Okay. Then we set up our boxes. There was two things with t's in them, and bless you, two things without t's in them. And then we sorted. We drew our arrows, just like you're going to be drawing your arrows, into these boxes. If it crossed the center line, it changed the sign. What did we do to make the bottom box? We added, we combined like terms to create the bottom box. What is that very last step that I always do in purple up there? Divide. Divide. What am I going to divide by this time? Negative six. Negative six. Now, I want you to notice something. Okay, since I divided by negative six, yes, I got a fraction, negative 15 over negative six, and then I reduced it down to five over two. But do you notice something really interesting about the symbols in, in, on the line there? They switched. They switched. Here's the one difference between equations and inequalities when it comes to solving. Okay, their answer is more than one number, so equations is one number, solution sets are more than one. The only difference is if you divide by a negative number, you're going to have to flip-flop that inequality sign. If it was less than, it becomes greater than. If it was greater than, it becomes less than. You just flip it from side to side. So let's go back through these steps one more time and just talk about what happened. We're going to write it down in words. Can I get y'all's focus over here? We're going to write it down in words. What did we do right here in green? What's that called? Distribution. Distribution. What do I do to distribute? What operation is it? Multiply. You're going to take the number in front of the parentheses and you're going to multiply it inside. Okay, we've been doing this for a while, so that sounds familiar. What was the next step? We set up our boxes, right? And then what happened with the arrows? What did I draw with red arrows? The, yeah, I'm going to call those the variables. Vars. The variables went to the left-hand side. And the constants, or the good old-fashioned numbers, went to the right-hand side. And if it crosses the line, what's going to happen? Change the sign. Yeah. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we had another green step here to create the, or the bottom of these boxes. What did we do? Combine like terms, which means to add. Very good. I like both of those answers. And then the last thing, the purple step, what did we do? Divide. Divide by the number in front of the variable, which is called the coefficient. But something else happened. What else happened? This is constants? Uh, in the blue, yes. If you divide or multiply by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality. That's new, that's different. And then very last, of like, you know, you have to reduce a fraction, reduce the fraction. But the main thing here is if you are dividing by a negative number, you have to flip-flop that inequality sign. I like to draw this little arrow to make it look like it's flipping. I invite you to do the same because it's kind of fun. But you flip-flop the inequality sign. It was a less than, and now it's a greater than. That is why I'm making such a big stink about you drawing that equal sign or the inequality sign every single step that you take. Don't just count on the line being there because now it's not always an equal sign. You have to know which symbol it is. So you should have an inequality symbol in between every step that you take on this kind of problem. So we're going to start with example one together. Everyone should be on the back. Is there anything I need to distribute in this one? Uh, it's in front of parentheses? No, there's nothing to distribute. So I actually get to skip a step. Yay. Um, can someone read this question for me, though? Go for it. What is the solution set for? I want you to highlight, circle, star, or underline the vocabulary solution set. We wrote that down earlier. That means we're looking for the inequality x greater than or equal to some number or less than or equal to some number. Okay? So let's start off with our steps. If we don't have to distribute, we can go ahead and start drawing our boxes. So here's my first box, here's my second box. 
How many terms up there have an X attached to them? How many do not? Okay, question, and this is important. I didn't, I need you to do this part right. What do I put in between the boxes? Like right, right here, what do I put in between the boxes there? I mean, the... Right what is that sign called? We've got to say it by its name. Less, less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. Looks my, like my left hand, so it's less than or equal to. Very good. Okay, I'm ready. I'm set up. That's important that we do that. Okay? So then we start dragging and dropping. Drag and drop. Negative 3x. Drag and drop. Positive 9x. Drag and drop. Negative 9. Drag and... Great. Thank you. What do I do again to create the bottom? I add them, so negative 3 plus 9, that's 6x, and then negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. What do I divide both sides by? 6. Divide by 6, divide by 6. So my solution set is going to be x and then negative 1. Now, what do I put in between it? Does it need to flip? Why not? The bottom is not negative. The number you divide by needs to be negative. That's when you flip it. I don't care that this one's negative. Don't care. The number you're saying to divide by, if it's positive, don't flip it. If it's negative, you flip it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, I want to give you a little bit of time to try example two. Don't go ahead of me just yet. I want us to stay together today because I want everyone's notation to look like this. Arrows and lines and inequalities and everything. The first thing we're going to do on number two, besides drawing our line, is check for distribution. Is there any? No. no. So, okay, we can set up our boxes. Uh, how many X's? How many constants? What goes in between the boxes? That sign. What's the name of that sign? Which hand does it match? It's the right hand, so it's greater than. There you go. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So now I organize. This is 5X. This is negative 2x, this would be 4, and this would be negative 13. I add, yeah, you're hitting up that calculator for me. Negative, thank you, negative 9. Now, what am I dividing by? 3. So when we get our answer, you can't just say x equals 3 because have we been, or sorry, negative 3. Have we been bringing down a negative, this, sorry, an equal sign the whole time? What is supposed to be negative? Okay, let's go back to this question. We just got distracted for a second. What's wrong with this? It's not the right symbol. What symbol have we been bringing down this whole time? Greater than. This is why I need you to write that greater than symbol in there because you can't just tell me it's negative 3 anymore. You have to say this entire sentence. This math sentence says x is greater than negative 3. You have to say the whole thing to be able to be done. The inequality matters. Yes? So I think some of us are like stuck because this one's kind of funky, right? That's fine. What's, what's in this problem that wasn't in our other problems? Uh, this, that. That, what is that called? Starts with a D. Distribution. We're gonna multiply that number seven into that parentheses. This is gonna be 21 minus 14X and I bring down everything. Yeah, 30, Greater than or equal to 35. I forgot my line. Yeah, that's what I said. My bad. Yeah, you're right. Draw the line first. Okay. So when we're describing the inequality that is all the solutions, now we draw our boxes. Inequality symbol, box. So how many things have an X? One. How many things don't? Two. That's okay if it's all lopsided like this. We still sort. So like oh, Louise 14. said, we're going to move the 14 over here. We're going to move the 21 over there. And 35. And the 35 right there. Oh, yeah, negative 21. Uh-huh, negative 21 because it and crossed the line. Combine like terms. Is there anything that actually combines with that 14x? No. no. so we just write it down again. No big deal. And the negative 21 plus 35 is, uh, is 14. Oh. What am I dividing by here? Uh, 14. 14. Are you sure? Ne oh my gosh, we're dividing by a negative. Our spidey senses should start tingling because when we divide by a negative, what do we have to do? Flip the inequality sign. Negative 14 divided by... Oh, I just cleared it. We should get x less than or equal to negative 1. 
You have to flip that inequality sign just like the guy in the video told us because we are dividing by a negative. We have to maintain truth in our mathematical statement. What are your questions here before we try another one? Okay, let's see. Let's see. I'm seeing some really good stuff around the classroom. So, Will, what do we do first? Five times two. Ooh, Will. Distribute. Thank you, Will. And so, Luis, now you can take it over. What do we do? It's five times two, which is 10. And then five times negative x, negative 5x. Yeah, and then we write down everything. Please don't forget to do that. That is an important step of rewriting your equation after you're done with distributing. Okay? I draw my boxes. And I put what symbol in between them, class? Uh, that, uh, that one. What's it called? Thing. You're using your left hand, so less than. Very cool. Okay, Fatima, how many things over there have an one. X on them? And then two. Yeah, Fatima. One. one. And then how many have two? Two. I mean, I mean, how many have a constant? I just gave you the answer. Two. two. Very cool. Two. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we start sorting it. Santos, will you help me sort uh, these? Did I write it right? Yes. Negative. It's going to be negative 5x. Okay, where does this 10 go? And what is it? what do I write down? Great. And then what about the 15? And it just stays 15. Fantastic. And so then I combine like terms, which is nothing on the x side. And if I combine like terms on the other side, I would get 5. I divide by a negative 5, and I just said divide by a negative, so my spidey senses go off. And I'm going to flip that inequality sign and get x greater than negative 1. Negative one. We had to flip the sign. How are we feeling, friends? So we've skipped down number 8. Number 8 is the hardest one on here. So if we do this one together and have good notes written, we'll be able to do 5, 6, and 7. We start by finding the inequality sign because we're finding the solution set. Again, we have that vocabulary up there, solution set. We draw a line down our inequality sign and distribute. Milo, how many things am I distributing in this problem? Four. You. Oh. Uh, two. two things. So I'm going to distribute the two and I'm going to distribute the three. When I do that class, if you contact your calculator for assistance, if you need it, our next line of this equation is 4x oh, you're doing this one with us. minus 2 uh -huh, plus 3x less than 3x plus 6. I've done the distribution in green so you can follow along. And I just rewrote the rest of it, including the symbol including the symbol. That's a less than symbol. Once I have taken care of all of my distribution, I'm going to draw my boxes. And then four and three. Wait, there's going to be three on that one and two on the other one. Okay. Three on, on the variable side? Yeah. Okay, three on the variable side and two on the constant side. Okay. We're going to start sorting. So go take it away, Luis. Positive four and then positive three. Okay. And then negative three. Okay. I agree. Positive 2 and then positive 3. Positive 2 and positive... What did I just draw? And then positive 6. I agree. If we combine all of these things together, remember we are adding 4 plus 3 plus negative 3. That's 4x. That's adding. That's 8. And that's 8. 2 plus 6 is 8. What am I dividing by? Do I need to flip my sign? No, because I am not writing down that we're flipping by a negative, so it stays as that less than symbol, the left hand, and we get x is less than 2 as my solution set. We should have honestly done 7. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. I need you guys to try the other problems, number 5, 6, and 7. I will give you the solution set so that you can check your work as you go. You can check your work on your own like we practiced last class, but for now, I just want to make sure we can practice this skill. Uh, we'll work on our test-taking skills of checking our work later. But if you were doing this problem, or these problems, here's what you should get. And the last one. So I don't care that you have the right answer written on your paper. That means nothing to me. These are your notes anyways. Make sure you can make these problems make sense to you on how to get these numbers. 
When you get these problems done, let me know. We'll come check over it. We'll answer your questions, and then we'll move on for the day. Are there any questions of what I'm asking for you to do today? Okay.